So, you've probably heard all the hype about T1s. You've probably also seen some reports. And now, you're planning on building your defense and considering whether you should also build a lot of T1s. But before you go over and start clicking train troops to infinity and beyond, there are a few things that you need to know. Hi, and welcome to Red Ebony. I am Akayasha, you can call me Aka, and in this video, we're gonna be uncovering the truth about T1s. Well, more like we're gonna be going over the things that you should know before you go ahead and build yourself a ton of T1s. You know, kinda like in the same way that you figure out stuff before you go and buy a car. You check out stuff like how much horsepower does it have? How well does it handle? How many chicks can it pull? Those kind of things. Now, I wanna say that going heavy on T1s is actually not something new. It is something that players have been doing for a while now. However, right now, the application of it is a bit different. Now, enter the T1 trap. So let's go over what this is exactly. You see a keep that is unbubbled. You scope it out, you have a look at the power, and you think to yourself, yeah, there's not much power in there, I can definitely take that. You go over to the keep, you don't scout, you hit it straight up, and you splat. And then you look at the report and find a ton of T1 troops in there. That is basically what the T1 trap is. It sets up the illusion of low power, but being extremely heavy on troops. And in those kind of situations, it definitely works. You can't argue with that. But for someone like me personally, I'm not really a fan of T1s. Now hold on, hold on, before you bring out the pitchforks and try to burn Aka, if you go through the rest of this video, you'll understand why I say that. Let's go over the benefits of being heavy on T1s. The first one is that it increases your survivability. I've said this before, Ebony is a game of buffs, but it's also a game of numbers. The higher your troop count, the more troops you have, the greater your chances are of surviving. The harder it is for people to kill you. And T1s are very good in the sense of they increase your troop count, your survivability, and also helping you to avoid situations where you get completely zeroed. Now, this is particularly helpful for situations where, for example, you're unbubbled and you need to protect your keep. Maybe it's that you want to protect your resources. Maybe it's that you want to protect your subsidies. But being able to avoid getting completely zeroed is a degree of safety that is definitely welcome. The next big benefit of being heavy on T1s is that they are particularly good for situations where you need points. So anytime you're in a point-based PVP situation like Battlefield or SVS, if you have that thick T1 shield, that would be very helpful for getting you some extra points when your main forces have been completely wiped out. Now, we're gonna go over the not so very good parts about T1s. And the first thing is the cost. For you to build an effective T1 defense, you'd be looking at having 100 million T1 troops at the barest minimum. The ideal sweet spot would be 150 million troops and above. Now, one thing that you will commonly hear about T1s is that they are cheap to build. They are the cheapest troop to build and that's why people favor building the T1s. Eh, uh, not quite. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Now, one of the favorite T1 troops that people like building is the T1 mounted troops. So if we come over to the stables and we go all the way over to T1s, then we just adjust this a little bit. We can see that building a thousand T1 troops will cost you 
80,000 food and 80,000 wood. Now, that's fine and okay. And with the immense power of simple math, we can see that building 100 million T1 mounted troops would cost you 8 billion food and 8 billion wood. In addition to about 2,000 days worth of speed ups, depending on how high your research is. And of course, those could be either training speed ups or common speed ups. That's a lot. That's not the definition of cheap. But if this is something that you're planning to do, then at least you know what you're in for. The other thing relating to the cost is the opportunity cost. And for anyone that just had flashbacks to high school economics class, take it easy. That's not exactly the direction that we're going to. What I'm talking about here is what other things could you have built with those 8 billion resources that you're putting into T1s. And when you look at it, there is a lot of stuff that you could have potentially done with those resources. So that's something that you will definitely have to take into consideration. And in that line, the second main issue with T1s is problematic growth. Because of the amount of time and effort and resources that you're putting into building T1s, a lot of your other areas will be left by the side. For players at, say, K35, that might not be such a problem. But for anyone K34 and below, going ahead and building T1 defenses is something that will slow down your growth. Not trying to sound bad or anything like that, just stating the truth. It's either that or you have a way of getting in a ton of resources, whether through coining or through alts, but whatever it is, you need a whole lot of resources to be coming in in order to avoid your growth being affected. Now, with that said, the next major thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to building T1 defense is your wall general. You will have your wall general, and since you're trying to build a T1 defense, you will be looking to set up the refines on your wall general's gear with whole number refines or flat refines and geared towards the troop type that you're mainly using. So if you're going with T1 mounted troops, you'll be looking at mounted troop HP, mounted troop attack, flat refines on your general's gear. What you might not realize is once you have built those T1s and you are growing further, getting more troops, unfortunately, that wall general that you have created for the T1s will not cut it. And that is because the higher level troops benefit more from having the percentage refines than the flat refines. So as you grow your keep, you would eventually need your wall general to have gear that has percentage refines and geared for more of the other troop types that you have, not just the T1 layer that you're working with. And that's not a particularly easy thing to do because if you're looking at setting up the refines on your wall general for Ares and Akamenide gear, getting the refines completed on your wall general will run you easily over 1 million gems to do the refines completely. And given the situation, that might actually be a very conservative amount. And you would essentially need to do that for two generals. Yes, granted, most likely not at the same point in time, but it's something that is definitely going to happen if you plan on growing beyond just having T1s. And of course, we were talking about Ares and Akemenide gear, but if we're looking at civilization gear and doing the refines on those, refining civilization gear is notoriously hard and expensive. So preparing your mind for having two wall generals, one for all your troops, and then one specifically for your T1s is eventually the path that you're going to have to go down. And it's something that you should keep in mind along the way. 
the next thing that we're going to talk about regarding T1s is that feeling of being indestructible. You see on some servers, guys that have a lot of T1s and they're just sitting down there without bubble, you know, letting it all hang out. And that's kind of funny because you think getting a lot of T1s will make you indestructible? No! Getting T1s doesn't suddenly turn you into Superman or Goku or whichever one you think is stronger. No. Having T1s will make it harder for you to get killed, certainly, but you can still get killed. If you have higher level troops, in a lot of situations, having T1s will not help you win a power exchange. And if you are just T1s as a T1 trap, you can still get killed. And now, more people are becoming conversant with how to actually tackle a T1 trap or a player that is heavy on T1s. So, yeah, T1s will definitely make it harder for you to get killed, but know your limits and act accordingly. The final thing that I want to talk about when it comes to T1s is that, unfortunately, for all that time and effort that you put into building those T1s, they are not going to be good for pretty much anything else. In most cases, you're not going to be using them to attack. Most people on the same level you are will easily wipe out a march that you have full of T1s. So aside from keeping them in your keep, there's not much else you're going to be doing with them. So now that you've heard all of that and you still want to go ahead and build yourself your T1 defense, that's cool. Make sure you build it right. Make sure you have enough of the T1 troops. My recommendation would be 150 million and above. Make sure you get your wall general set up correctly. And also be sure not to neglect other important parts of your defense like research and debuffs. If you like the content that we've covered so far in this video, it would be great if you can give the video a like. And if you want to find out more about how to build a good defense in Ebony beyond T1s, then be sure to check out this next video here. Thank you very much for your time. Aka signing out.